Pardon the interruption of our regular scheduled programming. Uh, we're, we'll get back to First Timothy next week, all those who were like just itching for more First Timothy. I know, I know you guys were. I know you were. Um, so we're, uh, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, 10 through, uh, 10 through 31. And I'm, th I'm thankful be, uh, that the Lord spoke to me through my wife um, and uh, had me rethink and prayed. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I think I do need to change gears a little bit. And, and so what I want to do this morning is talk to you mothers um, and uh, hopefully communicate uh, to you how much we love you and how much you're honored and how much we see you and how important your role is um, in our families uh, and not just our families, but our family, our church family, okay, and how the Bible talks about this and what the Bible says about um, moms, wives, and, and women in general. And so that's what I'm going to try to do today. And so what, here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read straight through Proverbs uh, 31, 10 through 31. Um, this is like the description of um, the, uh, like the biblical ideal wife and mother um, and woman, okay? And so here's what I need. All the um, husbands in the room um, or even boyfriends or uh, long term, here's what you do. As I read this and like you're hearing things, all of the things, you're like, you know what? That's my wife. That's my, yes, yes. You just, just, I'm helping y'all out. You just give you, give them a little nudge. All right. Just give them a little, yep. That's you. That's you. That's you. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. Love all y'all. Okay. Here we go. If you found your way to Proverbs 31 around here, we like to say word. Let's get into the word so the word could get into us. Who can find a wife of noble character? She is far more precious than jewels. Yes, ladies, you are. The heart of a husband trusts in her, and he will, not, he will not lack anything good. She rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. That word portions is also like task, so she's like a, she gives, um, she's, a, she's a business owner who gives her employees task for the job that they need to do that day. Um, she evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her profits are good and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the spinning staff and her hands hold the spindle. Her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. She's not afraid for her household when it snows, for all in her household are doubly clothed. She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the city gates where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing and she can laugh at the, th at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over activities of her household as, and is never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Speak to us through um, your word today. May we be, may we be a church who uh, strives to honor the women, the wives, the mothers, the grandmothers in our lives. We honor them the way your word honors them and the way you honor them this morning, Lord. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, here's, here's the first thing, ladies, um, that I want you to, want you to know, and, and hopefully, here's what's going to happen. Um, hopefully, as I'm saying these things, you're going to nod your head. I'm not going to be telling you anything you don't know, um, but I'm gonna, I, what I'm trying to communicate is that we see you, and we see your value and your worth, okay? First, motherhood. Motherhood is a marathon. The marathon of mar motherhood, right? All the women are like, yes, yes. Here's, here's, one thing, um, here's one thing about uh, marathons uh, that's pretty simple. They're not sprints, right? <laughs> They're not sprints. We all can relate to that. So don't sprint, but pace yourself. Don't sprint, but pace yourself. Here, here's what I mean by that. Oftentimes, 
um, what we can do with our children, and I know this from fatherhood, but um, we, can, we can tend to put expectations on our children too quick. And, and when we're aiming at character traits, which is what we should be aiming at with our children, not just obedience, but forming a character, as I'll talk about, um, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. So don't, don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. It's a marathon. It's a marathon, and marathons need a pace setter. You need to set the pace and, and understand that the expectations need to be drawn out over time, and, and, and that's okay. So be patient. Be patient and remember to pray. I want to encourage you from a, a little bit of my own story is um, uh, I wouldn't be, and I don't mean this flippantly, like for real, for real, y'all. Like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a mother who prayed. I wouldn't be here today. With, with all reality, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, ha I wouldn't happen, it wouldn't happen. And so be patient. My mother had to be patient with me. If you know my personality, you understand why, okay? And she was patient, and she prayed for me constantly, and that's why I stand before you today. That's why I'm still alive, I believe, with everything in me. And, and there's an old story. There's an old kid's story, um, and here's, here's what I know. Every time I read the story, the tortoise wins. It never changes. Why is that? And, and this ancient story that's span in our culture and has been retold in other cultures, because the things that matter most take time. Take time. So moms, don't get upset with yourself because your children aren't moving as fast as you would like them to in this area or that. Just remember, it's, it's a marathon, and we see you. We see the struggle. There's a great book called um, the, uh, Leadership in, in the Age of the Quick Fix. And, and here's the temptation, moms. Here's the temptation is that, um, and we see this throughout our society and it's being pushed in our culture, many are focused on short-term solutions for self. And so the temptation will be at certain times in order to get what you want out of the situation, even, if I, even sometimes that's a good thing. Right? Like just your kids doing exactly what you want them to do. Okay? But sometimes that's just a short-term solution for yourself. What we're aiming for, what we want is for our children, we're aiming for a long-term surrender to our Savior. And that's long-term. Play the long game. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to play the long game. And don't get upset in the short term. We were watching Right Now Media Plug. Elizabeth and I were watching with the girls yesterday, Right Now Media, and there's this show on there, Stories from the Storyteller, and it's, um, uh, it's Jonathan uh, e uh, Evans' family, and it's a cartoon of his family, and they do this thing or whatever, and he tells stories about the practical things that's going on in their life. And there was this, there was this one episode where um, all the kids were, they went camping. And so John, Jonathan Edwards, his cartoon character, he like, they do like a whole teaching in the backyard of how to set up your tent. And all the kids, all the different kids had to set up their tent and build their tent. So he goes through the five principles of building a tent, okay? And so then they all go out, get, they all go out camping, and like one kid actually goes through the five principles. The other, the other two tents that the other kids had, they like left off like staking it down, and, and one like put their tent under a tree with like broken limbs up in it and stuff. And so, so it gets to the end, and, and the reason that they, the reason they didn't follow through is because they got out to the campsite and they wanted to go. They wanted to go canoe in the in the lake that was there. They wanted to go chase after a skunk. One one kid did, so it was all funny, right? But it gets to the end and it's middle of the night and the wind blows and blows one tent off to the side, you know, and uh, and then it blows the tree limbs out and it crushes down on another tent. And so they basically have to sleep in in the rain all night. And um, the kids are standing there uh, the next morning and they're all like exhausted, right? Because they haven't slept and they're all soaking wet. And uh, and Jonathan. Never the kids are like, oh, we're so tired. And he's like, why are y'all tired? And they're like, our tents are, you know. And he's like, he says this whole thing. He's like, well, he's like, you know, when you try to take, um, uh, when, you, when you try to take the easy road, it's actually the long road. And when you take the long road, it's actually the easy road. And one of his kids stands up and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. What dad's trying to say is taking a shortcut will cut you short. And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's it. So right there from the mouth of a cartoon. Taking a shortcut, moms, will cut you short and your children short. Play the long game. Play the long game. The Bible says it this way in Proverbs 31, verse 14. 
It says she's like a merchant. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from far away. That's planned out. That's strategic, right? It's not flippant. It's not short term. It's not let me get the quickest thing. It's been planned. Boom, and it arrives on time. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. Proverbs. 31, 16. It's thought out. It's long game. We're playing the long game here. So moms, play the long game. Pace yourself. Don't be upset if things aren't going in the short term like you thought they would. The other thing that's true is mother, mothering is parenting and parenting is partnership. Parenting is not meant to be friendship only. We live in a culture, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but it's like it seems that parents um, want to be friends or, or that's being communicated to us from our culture, outside culture. It's like, oh, you should be your kids' friends. And that's fine. You should develop into a friendship, yes, but that's, mature, that's a mature relationship. Parenting is a responsibility of shaping and forming children, not letting them shape and form themselves. That's just true. You're forming character. Here's, here, here's this piece I was mentioning just a minute ago. This is less about what your kids do, and it's more about how they do what they do. We're shaping character. This is character formation, not just forcing them to do actions that you prefer them to do. Right? This is what it means to be a mother. This is what it means to parent. So point out the why. I remember a conversation with my wife. We, we've had this multiple times, and one of the main reasons um, we went into student ministry um, uh, we felt led to, but one of the things that God used to lead us to it was there were often times in the churches that we grew up in that no one explained to us the why. They just told us the what. And I was the kid, y'all have heard me say this, like you know me well enough to know. I'm a kid who's always asking why. Like that's not sufficient. Don't tell me what. I need to know why. I need to know a why. And here's what's cool about that. The Bible doesn't just give us a bunch of what's. In fact, it focuses on the why. It focuses on the why. And so, so think, about, think about what you're telling your kids to do and give them the why. I wish, I, here's what, I don't know, I'm going to be honest, I probably wouldn't have made better decisions when I was a kid just because I was rebellious, but at least I would have known what the decisions that I was making a little bit better. I would have understood them a little bit. I would have known the why behind it. I would have known the why behind it. And that's what we tried to do in student ministry. We tried to give them the why as often as, and as much as we could. And so parents, moms, know the why. Focus on forming their character, not their action, because actions will follow character. Did you hear that? Focus on their character. Form, shape their character, because actions will follow their character. Here's how you know this, and y'all know this to be true. When times get hard, you know what you don't fall back on? What you've been told to do. You fall back on your character, because it's, it's automatic. You just do what's there. It's your default. When things get tough, pressure's on, emotion's high, you fall back to your character, you fall back to your default. So what we want to do is we want to raise children who know how to operate from their character and, and have a character that's good. We want them to operate well in the hard times. The only way to do that is to shape their character, right? You know that's true. Point, so point out the why. So mothering is parenting, parenting is partnership. Mothering's not meant to be done alone. Right? If you, if you, I, I think this is true in marathons. I think they do this. They have people who run alongside them that are pace setters. It's definitely true in cycling. If you've ever watched, watched like the Tour de France or something like that, um, they have they have pace setters. Tour de France is that better? <laughs> um, uh, pace setters on bicycles. And so, like, if you like uh, the, the big bikers, like what's that one guy Armstrong or whatever. And I know there's a conflict, but anyway, right? He would have a whole team, and they they like they take turns setting the pace, and then at the end, the one guy who's that dude, he takes off and, and finishes strong. There's pace setters, and here's here's what I would say. Um, uh, can we just say it this way? Um, it takes two to make a child. I'll just leave it there. Which means it should take two to raise a child or parent. It's not meant to be done on its own. Now, there is grace and mercy where that's the case. So if that's you, listen, God, where sin abounds, where thing, let's say it this way, where things aren't the way they should be, grace abounds all the more. Grace abounds all the more. But it was never meant to be done alone, right? It was meant to be done in, in the context of a marriage and produce a child and then parent that child together. 
So husbands help and partner in this. But at the same time, right, like we know this, uh, mothers, you need other mothers in the same walk of life as you, like in the same sphere of life, going through the same thing. You need this. You need pace setters because motherhood is a marathon. It's, it's the long game. We're playing the long game. So we need other mothers to come alongside of us who are playing the long game. And what we're striving for here at Smoky View is to develop a group of mothers and, uh, that, will, that will be that for you in your context, as well as you need mothers ahead of you in life. You need some mothers who've went ahead of you or a couple of years that you can look towards. And, I, and listen, I'm telling you, there's mothers in this room who are a part of Smoky View who even before I was here were praying for you that you would come so that they could impart some of the wisdom that God has shown them. So we need this. So I would tell you, engage, get engaged with the mothers. Even if they look different, dress differently, come from a different generation than you. Listen, remember what I said about wisdom at the beginning a, a minute ago to all of our graduates. Wisdom is a posture of learning. It's not knowing all the answers. We need, um, this is not the greatest way to say it, but we need the gray hairs, okay? Uh, I love you, all you gray hairs. I need you. I need you. I, I, more than anyone else, I need you because I have a tendency to rebel and do crazy things. Mothering's not meant to be done alone, so we need, because it's a marathon. We need husbands. We need mothers in the same walk of life. We need mothers ahead of you in life. Here's what it says. Her children, Proverbs 31, 28, it says her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. It's partnership right there in the midst of it. Motherhood's a marathon. Aim for the proper finish line. Aim for the proper finish line. Oftentimes, uh, what we think in our head is what we want. What we want to do is raise good, raise good children, right? And some of us would like nod our head. Yeah, we want to raise good children. No, we don't. No, we don't. We want to raise mature, competent, and contributing adults. We don't want grown-up children, b boys with beards. That's not what we want. Okay? That seems like we have a lot of that. Let's be a church who has less of that and contributes less to that, right? We want to raise mature, competent, and contributing adults. Here's one of the dangers. We need to set the proper, aim for the proper finish line. What we don't need to do is live through our kids vicariously. We don't need to live out our dreams we missed through our kids. And sadly, this is a thing that I've seen happen. Here's what we're aiming at. Maturity in Christ's likeness. Competency in Christ's gifting and contributing in Christ's world. Amen. That's what we want our children to become, right? A right understanding of Yahweh, the God in the heavens. A right understanding of ourselves and themselves. And a right understanding of the world and seeing the world the way God sees the world. That's a good aim. Amen? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Proverbs 31.30 says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Fears the Lord. This is a a respect and a proper vision and understanding of God, which results in a proper understanding and vision of self, which results in a, a right and proper understanding of the world. And mothers, as you do that, your children will be raised up in that to become mature in Christ, competent in that, the gifting that Christ has given them, and they will contribute to the world that Christ loves. That is the right aim. So aim well. Motherhood is a marathon, yes? Motherhood is also a merry-go-round. I see you, mamas, I see you. Right? The daily responsibilities. I call this the mothering monotony. It's like the same, it's just the same, right? You wake up and do the same thing. And this is not everybody. Everybody shares roles and responsibilities in the home differently. But like just the other day, uh, this is like Friday, I, uh, I called Elizabeth and um, I had to go run errand for stuff at the base. And I called her and I was like, what are you doing? She said, I'm drowning in a sea of laundry. And it's like, again? How are we still doing laundry? Didn't we do laundry yesterday, right? The dishes are this way. I do the dishes at our house don't, that don't clap or pat me on the back. It's like a very small, minute portion of what happens in our house. I do that, okay? Elizabeth does basically all the rest. Um, and uh, 
but but I'm like, how, I've done dishes three times a day. How do we still, how's the, how, how's the whole sink full of dishes, dirty dishes? I was like, how's this possible, right? This monotony. And I know it's even, if, if I feel it, if I feel it with the little bit of things that I do and roles that I have that we've divvied out in our house, like I know Elizabeth, and she tells me how she feels it often, right? <laughs> and I don't mean that bad. She's like, man, this is, and, I, and we, we have to remind each other. We have to remind each other, listen, these monotonous things matter. There's meaning in the monotony. We're cultivating character by the way you, by the way you consistently do these things over and over and over. You don't know it, but you're shaping your children. It matters. It matters, moms. I understand the daily responsibilities can be monotonous. But Proverbs 31.15 says, She rises while it's still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. She rises every day, day in and day out, the monotony, up early, taking care of the responsibilities of the household, whatever those look like for you. And she does it over and over and over. And here's what I want you to know. It can be monotonous. It can be like, oh. Does anyone see it? Does anyone care? What, does, does it matter? Does it have meaning? What I'm standing up here on behalf of all of us who are not mothers to tell you it matters and it has meaning and there's more value in it than you can ever imagine. The monotony actually matures your children. They see it over and over and over and one day they'll look back and say, you know what, my mother was faithful. She was a faithful mom who served me well, and that will cultivate and shape them to be moms and dads who do the same. The monotony, motherhood's a merry-go-round. So here's the deal. The temptation is to retreat. Don't retreat. Don't retreat. Just because it's tiring and exhausting doesn't mean you're not doing a good job. I know sometimes you feel the exhaustion and the tiring and you think to yourself because it's real easy when you get tired and you're like emotionally drained and you're physically drained to think to yourself, man, I'm not, I'm not doing a good job. I'm not, I'm not, this is not working. My kids are going to grow up to be chaos monsters, you know, boys with beards. And I don't know what the equivalent of girls would be with that. I don't, I don't like the, the thing that just came to my head. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll just move on from that. <laughs> Do you get, you get what I'm saying? We don't want that. And it feels like that sometimes. We, get, we can get tired and we get physically, emotionally drained. And we're like, man, am I even doing anything that's like contributive? Is, am I, is this working? Is this, am I doing anything of value? And let me, again, just hear me, hear me. Don't retreat. Press in. Motherhood is a merry-go-round. It's going to feel like, oh, I'm here again, oh, I'm here again, this thing again, this thing again, this thing again. And it's valuable, and it's, it's valuable. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Don't, don't retreat. The other thing that I would say about this is don't let everything and everyone else determine your rhythms in your home. Don't let everything and everyone. Here's what I mean. Moms, there is a, um, there is a temptation to just, you feel tired, and so it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to do this. And so doing some tasks that need to be done, like scheduling out things and, and planning what your week and looks like and those types of things, you can allow just all the demands of life to dictate your schedule. Moms, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't let everyone else determine the rhythms of your family. I, I want to bring your uh, attention to, there's a story in the Bible about this guy named Moses. Uh, Stu talked about him earlier, but when he was um, just a, a, a baby in his mama's womb, um, here's what was happening. The, um, the culture of the day had deemed it necessary um, to put to death all the firstborn and all the sons, for that matter, all the, all the sons of the Israelite community. And they said that that was good. The culture... Culture said it was good to put all the boys to death. That's what was happening. And, and here's what happens. Um, Moses' mother does not allow the culture that she lives in to dictate what she was going to do with her son. And so she makes a plan and stands against it. And Moses, and what ends up happening is Moses is born. He's raised in the Pharaoh's house and becomes a becomes the, uh, the one who leads Israel out of slavery and into freedom. 
Listen to this verse. Don't let everyone else determine your rhythms. And and just because you're tired and exhausted, hear me, you are strong. Proverbs 31, 17 says, she draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. Does she, does she draw on the world for, to t- tell them what to do? No, she draws on her own strength. Mothers, you are strong. Nobody, listen, God has gifted you specifically and equipped you specifically for your children, no one else. No one else. You are strong. Draw on your strength. Do not retreat. Do not retreat. Do not let everything and everyone else determine your rhythms. You determine the rhythms of your household and point them to character um, shaping, character shaping of your children. Amen? Here's a negative case study. Go and read the story of Samson. Samson is a man who grows up in a home where there's no forming and there's no character shaping. And what happens is the people he loves and desires the most because it says that consistently um, he saw with his eyes and he went and took what he saw was to be good. And, and when we allow our children, when we don't shape and form and raise our children, um, they see with their eyes and go get what they think is good. And that destroys everything and everyone they love. Read the story of Samson. He, kills his, his, he gets his first wife killed. He gets many people in his nation killed. It's horrible. It's horrible what happens. And this is a case study of, of honestly a mom who retreated and allowed the circumstances and the situation to dictate what mattered in their home and the rhythms in their home. And Samson paid the, paid the ultimate price for that eventually. Motherhood is a merry-go-round, so one of the things that you need to put in is what I would call disruptive rhythms. Disruptive rhythms. What I mean by this is conversations about the most important things in life. Conversations... The schedule can get busy and things. We got all these responsibilities, this daily monotony that we've been talking about over and over in the merry-go-round, all of these things that you have to do, and it can, it can just, you can just get on for the ride and you just go. But what we need to do is put into place some disruptions from the ride of the merry-go-round and have conversations about the most important things in life. Proverbs 31, 26 through 27, which we read, says this. Her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. There's wisdom on your tongue. There's a, stories about John Wesley, which is like a man. He's one of the superheroes of the faith um, in, in Christian history in, in America. And, and stories about his mom. Uh, one of the things that she would do is to be disruptive in her own house is she would, at times, she had a bunch of kids and, um, and, and, so, and, and a bunch of boys. And so she would, uh, she would take her apron and she would throw it over her head. And when she threw her apron over her head, uh, all of her kids knew that was the time that mama was praying and not to mess with her. And so they, Jonathan Wesley d- d- would tell stories about seeing his mom over in the corner with the apron over her head when, they, when the daily monotony was getting, you know, mamas, you've been there. You've been there. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to wipe out all my kids. I'm going to have no progeny. Uh, you're there. And it's just, boom, she would put the apron on, go before the Lord and pray. And it was a disruptive rhythm. And he remembered that. And he, he actually began to model that in his own life. He, he wouldn't put an apron over his head. But it, he knew that, man, when times got tough and the challenges of the everyday responsibilities got, that he knew exactly where he could go. There was a disruptive rhythm in his mother's life to communicate a reality and a truth that was being instilled in his depth as he viewed his mother. And it played out in his life. And he became one of the juggernauts of the faith. What you do matters, moms. In fact, one of the most popular sayings, and and I always butcher it, but it's um, uh, that he's he's uh, coined with is um, every pretext is a is an opportunity for a proof text um, uh, without the context. And and so that's just to say, as I talked about last week, uh, here's here's a simpler way to say that the the rule of context is context rules. Context determines what words mean. Okay, and. That, that, that phrase that he over and over and has been used in hermeneutics courses over and over throughout history, they say it came from John Wesley's mom. And so she would, as she would teach her kids how to read the Bible and what the Bible said, she would tell them, you got to read it in the context. 
Amen. This was a wise woman. Her mouth spoke wisdom and loving instruction was on her tongue. Mamas, let me, hear, let me tell you this morning, there's wisdom and loving instruction on your tongue. Don't give up. Have some disruptive rhythms of conversation. Find it in the car. Find it here. Find it there. Put it in. Disrupt the daily rhythms and activities of life to communicate with your kids about Jesus, about friendships, about their dreams and goals, about economics, age-appropriate, about politics, age-appropriate, about history, about science, all of these things. Mama, there is, there is wisdom on your tongue, and your kids need to hear it. Amen? Motherhood is a merry-go-round. Moms, we see you. We know it's a marathon. It's a long journey, long it's also a merry-go-round. We see the monotony, we understand, and we love you. Lastly, motherhood matters. Nothing novel there, no clever statement. It's just true. Straight to the point. Motherhood matters. Let me give you four or five reasons why. Your wives, mothers, and families first as your responsibility to the Lord and the world. We here at Smoky View will always strive to honor that and encourage that and serve you towards that first. You're not a member of this church or somebody who attends this church first. No, no, you are a, you're a wife, a mother, and you are a family first. This is very clear. Paul points this out. Men, we looked at this in 1 Corinthians. Timothy, we looked at this last week and how he's, he said part of the thing that was happening with the church and the structure of the church was usurping the home, and the home is the, to be first priority. The family unit is to be first priority. We, we know this too. Here, here's what's wild. Jesus is on the cross. The most tragic moment, broken moment, the most easiest time to be self-focused. He speaks seven times there in that, uh, in that whole scene. And one of the times he looks down and makes provisions for his mother. You know, think Jesus doesn't value mothers. Think again. Motherhood matters so much. It's one of the seven final statements of Jesus's uh, breathing life. And he said it from a cross. And so we will always put your responsibility as wives, mothers, and, and, and your family context first. And I can, I, I can honestly say, I can say with integrity and as a spirit that witness bears witness to me, like to the best of my ability, I've done that even with our staff. And you can talk to our staff and I think they would, they would concur. Number two, mothering matters because it satisfies a deep desire in the overwhelming majority of women. Here, young ladies specifically, let me speak to you for just a moment. There's a whole narrative in our culture that what will satisfy the deepest desires of your heart is that you go out and you live your life and you do all the things that you want to do and you get a career and, and you uh, travel the world and you do all you and, and that children will be something that holds you back from that. There is nothing further from the truth. That is a lie from Satan. Don't, what I'm not saying is not don't pursue a career. I'm not saying that. Pursue a career. Did, we read the verses, right? She buys and sells land and gets earnings from it. She, she makes linens and hustles that out, on, out there. She does lots of things. She's a business owner. Pursue her career. You, you do not, you do no, here's what we cannot do, moms and dads. This is true for mothers and fathers. Your career should never hinder your responsibility or stand in the way or even be considered an obstacle as you pursue your career, period. That's a lie from the adversary. Hear me. Some, very few, it seems, in the New Testament we see are called to be people who are single. But it's not so that they can go satisfy all their desires in their own life. It's so that they can prioritize Christ in their life. And God has a specific calling on their life. So you can't use that one either. Do not buy into the lie. Here's the reality. For most, the overwhelming majority of women, the most satisfying thing you'll ever do is mother a child. Period. You can hear me. This is the word of the Lord speaking. That's not for me. It's on the first pages of Scripture. Proverbs 31, 13 says, She selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. Willing. It's this, it's this sense of like there's a deep desire that's driving her to provide and be a mother. 
for her family and be a wife for her husband. And there's no satisfaction. Don't buy, I'm going to say it one last time and then I'm going to move on. Don't buy into the lie of the culture. Don't do it. Mothering matters because it motivates the overwhelming majority of men to provide, protect, and priest in their family. This is true. They provide, protect. Here's the deal, man. When, if uh, men are, are motivated, are motivated and have a heart towards a, a woman who mothers their children, they long for that. They, it's a, that is, a, that is a, um, a thing that motivates and drives men. It's not all men, but most men. Again, some men are called to be single, specifically for the dedication of their entire lives to the Lord. But here's the deal. Men are motivated by that. If you, if you have, and the men will nod, right? I know they will. If you have a wife who's been a mother and being a mother, there's, there's nothing more motivating for you to go out and do the roles and responsibilities that you have than that. Watching your wife mother well, is, man, that's a, that is a great thing. Proverbs 31, 11 says, The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will, lack, he will not lack anything good. You want a good man? Strive towards preparing yourself or being a good mother. And most often what will happen is the man will follow suit and be motivated to be a better man. Most often. Mothering matters because it shapes our future. It shapes our future. <laughs> Mothers, what you're doing matters so much, it's actually forming and shaping the future of the world. In the monotony, when you're like, ah, it's the dishes again, it's the laundry again, you are shaping the future of this nation and of the world. Hear that. Do not forget that. Proverbs 31, 25, as we read, said, strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the time to come. That means... Think about that. Like, it doesn't matter what comes. Mom's so prepared, and she's, she's been doing such a good job. She's like, whatever comes my kid's way, they're ready for it. Ha! You remember uh, uh, Lion King? Come on. I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> and then you hear the hyenas laughing. No? No one else? Just me. Cool, cool, cool. Get your Disney game up. Come on now. Mothering matters because it shapes our future. Mothering matters because it is a part of our first command given in the garden. I mean, right out the gate, as I've already said this morning. God blessed them. This is Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Two things. Bear children, husbands and wives, man and woman. Have children and subdue the earth. Rule and reign over the earth. That's our command. Do that. Mothering matters. It just does. And so here's, a, here's what I want to tell you, moms. Mothering matters. And today, we see you. We love you. We pray for you. We acknowledge you. And we know that you're not always valued like you should be. But you are of unimaginable importance to our lives, our families, our church, and our society. Today, you are loved you're honored, and I speak for everyone who's not a man. Here's the truth, or not a, a mom. We, we, I could stand up here and speak all day, and it wouldn't do it justice. We don't have words to communicate to you the value that you bring into our lives. So I'm just going to read what the Bible says, what we just read. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpassed them all. Give her the reward of her labor. And let her works praise her at the city gates. Do you see that? You, here's all I can say. You surpass them all, moms. You surpass them all. You deserve a reward. And your works should praise you. And we want to praise you and honor you this morning.